that's Wasabi, welcome back to the channel. We've got a Clan Wars battle today, and there is a campaign running, and this battle is 1AR versus Panda Clan, and of course we're on the Ensk map. Fog of War applies, so we can't see the enemy line up until they get spotted, and vice versa, so this is the initial deployment. So we've got the E100s pushing up to the H line here. Just to basically stay in reserve. We've got a chieftain going out to the field. A couple of 279Es. Oh, we've got three in total. And then we've got some E3s that are going to provide backup along the rail line. Alright, what we're going to do is free cam view for this part of the battle. But you can see the layout on the mini-map, of course. But um, as far as the enemy goes, in fact, as far as any tank goes, the further away we are from the player who's replays is based on the sort of less information we get, so movement appears a bit jerkier, for example. But uh, for example, here we've got 279E. We should be able to see the tank because it should be within view range of the player. So here we go. Yeah, so 279E here and T110E3 here. So what the team is trying to do is basically get some damage into them. And you can see from the damage bars, you know, we've taken some damage on the E3s. And we haven't really done any damage to the enemy yet at this point, but this is early days. It's a 15 minute game. We're either going to win by killing the enemy team or by capping out. That would be the goal. Now there's a chieftain up in the corner, but we can't see him because he's outside of the view range of the player. We've got Kurgil down in the um, H2 area, so even though Ensk is one of the smallest maps, it's just outside the draw range, so not rendering as far as the um, game client goes. So it's a bit sad, so I'm not much sure we can do about that. But uh, you see here, this is um, one of the key positions for an E3. It sort of prevents people coming down the road here and we've got 2790 here on the rail lines looks like we're redeploying tanks back on that side now maybe for a push through the city so if that happens we'll go over there and follow them but most of the action is down here at the moment and you can see the enemy tanks only really get spotted when they come out and try to fire so they're hard to say whether they're camping on this map or they're just holding back until the time runs down, which is most often the case, so most of the action will happen in the last couple of minutes. So what we might do, okay, no, they are moving through the city, so let's go and see how this transpires. Yep, I found a 279E who's basically guarding that side of the map, so he's being spotted by the E3 in the back. The advantage of the E3 is just the penetration it's got with the premium rounds, I think it's one of the higher pins of the game. And again, they're just taking up a position here, not seeing much in the way of opposition yet, so the majority's pushing up there. We've got the E100 just holding at the moment until Geordie looks like he's going to go up this ramp here and try and get some shots into another tank, so let's see how that works out. Alright, now he spotted the 27 ie in the um, windows down below. And he's trying to do some damage there. But uh, so far, not getting much of a reaction from the enemy. They're not pushing in at all. This is potentially one of the problems in the 10v10 game, is uh, if you split your forces and the enemy is not, they can sort of outmatch you. But it looks like, yeah, getting some damage into that shift in the field which is good. Alright, game moving a bit slowly here so not much we can show you other than it being a little bit static but uh, Geordie again just trying to line up that 279E. Unfortunately can't quite show you Geordie's view there to see what sort of target he's getting but I can guarantee you that 279E is behind hard cover at the moment and he's just going to move out until he can potentially try and shoot back. So Joey's just going to sit there and be patient for the moment. Okay, as far as, but uh, yeah, looks like that didn't connect. It went past the 279E. That's the only target at the moment, but we can see they've got a few. They've got at least four 279Es, two chieftains. 
and one E3, but again, we haven't seen the whole team yet, so we don't know if they've got much more than that. But uh, I've got to say, you can only enter these battles of 10v10 uh, with a minimum of nine players, so it can't be any less than nine or any more than ten. Now, the other thing you need to try and achieve in these battles is to get at least three kills if you're not going to win but you get three kills, then you can still accumulate fame points for your players, which is basically the reason people are playing the campaign. So that's always a goal, regardless of you know how you uh, match up against the enemy team. All right, we might uh, just jump forward until we see a bit more action. Apart from Geordie just trying to change the angle, so we'll skip forward and rejoin when there's a bit more action. Alright, now we've got a bit of a push going on here, so we're just rejoining, but you can see now more enemy being spotted, and that's mostly because we're moving closer and closer to them. So, now you want hundreds have moved up, Jordy's here in support. And most tanks have lost a bit of health, apart from the E100s haven't really been engaged at this point. Okay, we've got a chip in the field here, and we do know there was a 279 in the corner. And Geordie, looks like Geordie put a big hit into one of the chieftains there. 700 odd damage. Five minutes to go. So again, everyone's being a bit cautious here. No one wants to over push. The enemy's deployed a bit wider, so and you don't want to sort of lose hit points trying to get into position if you can help it. And okay, we're pushing 279Es up through the rail yards as well. So, yeah, trying to push the enemy into the corner of the map. So, this is about map control right now. So, we've got a 279Es coming up here to try and attack the 279 over in the corner here. And they're finally starting to get some damage in here. And he's a bit isolated, so here's the target. Vegeta in the Chieftain and the 279E doing his best to angle against all the sources. And of course, it's got some pretty amazing armor on the 279E, but that doesn't mean you can't shoot him. So he's down to almost one shotable. See him running away. Shots going over the top. But uh, alright, we've got a brawl going on in the city here, so let's go back to that. And this is real brawl. Three and a half minutes to go, so this is the action everyone's in in this one area of the map at the moment, apart from obviously the guys we just came across from. So who's got the overmatch? Well, we're starting to their hold on the game, taking out one tank, although it looks like once you use a one shot and they'll definitely focus him. He's got three tanks looking at him, there goes Buncey. That leaves Kurgil to do some damage to this 279E in the rear of him. He should be using the high DPM gun, which is the 128mm. And there we go, gets Chieftain goes out and we're starting to make an impact. The enemy trying to run out of the way, so I'll just keep an eye on them. 279 is backing up and they're just trying to get angles out so that they're not going to. Here we go, got a chip coming out the corner to try and shoot Kurgil. Actually, they're going up to Graham's in the E3. So, Kurgil come up and take some damage out. He's definitely getting some big Delta hits in here. There goes Graham's, that's unfortunate. So, that's 5 all at the moment. There's a battle going on in the far corner of the map. They're starting to get rid of those tanks there. Kurgil's holding his ground here, and it looks like he's going to focus the tanks that he can. Can't quite tell his health, but he's low health according to the health baths here, so can he survive is the question. He needs to do is start bouncing some, some rounds, but up against the 279E. I know he's got some support here from Dumi, so can Dumi get a hit on the uh, 279E now? One thing is Kurgil needs to get out of the way so he can do it, but he has hit the 279E and not taken another hit and he's bouncing the 279E, so let's just look at that. 
Anyway, in the last two minutes of the game, gets the kill, there goes the 279E. Now there's only two enemy tanks left, the B3, who's on no health now, and now it's just one chieftain. So, a minute and a half left to go, and it's just down to this chieftain here, and we've got Arky in the 279E facing him, and we've got Doomy and Kurgil, who's coming through the map. We can't see Kurgil's marker, of course, because we're using his tank as the base of the replay. But uh, basically, Arky basically has to try and wear down this um, chieftain here, and not try and lose too many hit points, and try and get some out of the chieftain. So he's not trying to stop off the capping so much as kill the tanks, and he's done a pretty good job there. Now this chieftain is in a pushing position, he's hold down. Got an E3 facing him, now it's only 58 seconds to go. They managed to get a shot into him, but he's got some dead tanks here to hide behind. And they really don't have fast moving tanks to come out of the way. Now Kurgil is up there, just behind where the flag is. And uh, he's going to try and snipe the uh, top of the roof of the uh, Chieftain. And so far bouncing off, now there's only 30 seconds to go. They can only win by capping or killing everyone. Uh, he finally comes out. And He's come out to shoot Doomy and he gets Doomy, so now it's back down to 1v1. Here comes Kurgil into the um, circle here. Come out to shoot and he does do some damage to Kurgil and Kurgil's on very minimal health now, so this is really uh, coming down to the wire. 15 seconds to go and he's firing HE. That, I think he's run out of APCR and Kurgil might get him. There's 7 seconds to go, who's going to reload first? going to be Kurgil, goes for the Kapala I think here, and bang, gets him with no time left on the clock. That was an amazing end there. Alright, let's have a look at the results. So uh, well, Kurgil just managed to get a pretty impressive damage there, 5.4k of damage and 4 kills, and of course he survived to get the final kill, which is uh, pretty impressive. And he's finished on top there with EXP, 1641. A really nice result there, and the team Overall has done a fair effort there. The enemy team know that one of the chieftains did nearly 7k, so uh, well done to Captain Gorilla. Now, this all came down to the wire, but um, let's have a look at the economics as well. So, Kurtz managed to fire 18 shots out of his E100 gun. 15 of those hit and 13 penetrated, and he managed to block 3k of damage, which obviously helps. Uh, battle payments, of course, were running, so that's given him a pretty nice income there, 116,000 credits, so it doesn't always happen. Um, of course, you lose, so you saw the enemy scores, uh, and they get penalty on cost as well as uh, EXP, so you don't really want to be on the losing side, at least not too often. Alright, great game there from Kurgil, and a great game there from the team. I hope you liked the result. Uh, if you like the video, of course, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing that. We'll have more great content to follow. Thanks very much for watching.